Hello everybody, this is Ace Stocky and welcome to a tutorial video on witchery. Um, this is going to be the first of hopefully a couple in the series. Um, the, this first one is going to focus on uh, how to get yourself started in early game kind of stuff. Um, so basically, you first of all obviously need to do regular vanilla Minecrafty sort of stuff. Um, the place that I would suggest is the best place um, to set yourself up is near a forest biome. Um, because you're going to need a lot of saplings and you need a lot of other uh, you know, wood and logs and different things like that. Um, you're also going to need to break quite a lot of grass um, because there's a, a number of different kinds of seeds you need to get uh, and I'll show you those seeds in a second. Clearly breaking grass on creative doesn't get me anything but you know, you get the idea. It will drop um, seeds at a random chance and that will give you some of the things that you need to get started. Um, but basically, all the things you need to get started are in the chest here. Uh, ignore the fact that I've cheat enchanted that. Um, basically, you're going to need some form of axe, a hoe, about eight stone, a piece of dirt, um, a stack of wood, three glass, uh, 22 iron. Um, if you find any gold ore, whatever you do, don't smelt it yet. Because um, that's going to be something that comes a little bit later that we're going to talk about. Um, you need probably about a stack of clay. Um, some flint, at least one egg, um, preferably find yourself um, somewhere where, there was a chicken here a minute ago, um, preferably somewhere where there's a chicken around because you're going to need feathers as well, probably some cows because you'll need leather, need some bones, um, need some sugar cane, <clears throat> I've got bone meal, you don't really need it, um, it's just going to help out, uh, you will need some ink sacks as well, a flint and steel, one dandelion, one poppy, like I said, a stack of saplings, so just heaps. Um, to get started, you don't need uh, spruce saplings, uh, but you will need those later, so um, I'll show you how to get those in a little while. Um, and then you'll need pretty much you know, a couple of each kind of seed, and like I said, you get those from just punching dirt. So what I'm going to do is just basically plant them. Now the first kind of seed that I have here is a water artichoke seed. Uh, you plant that on a water source block, um, and it will grow just like a regular plant. Uh, the next ones are belladonna, you'll need those, then mandrake, now you'll actually need quite a lot of mandrake flowers, or mandrake roots, which is what you get when you harvest them, um, you'll need some snowbells, and you'll need wolfsbane. So those are the uh, seeds that you can get dropped. Um, there's a couple of other plants that it adds, and I'll talk to those in a little while. I suggest, like I said, get yourself in a forest hills sort of biome or a foresty biome, um, but you will need for later game things um, to find an extreme hills biome because emeralds are pretty important in this mod. So now that you've got you know all of these things that you had, uh, the first thing that I would suggest that you do uh, is make a witch's oven. And the way that you do that is you grab a, bu a bunch of that iron that you've got, make some iron bars, I don't know what happened then, place an iron bar top and bottom, and then make a little helmet shape out of iron. Uh, that gives you a witch's oven. Um, you can see I've spawned a bunch of them. Uh, basically, with the witch's ovens do, um, I assume that by the time you got to this point and you've made all that iron, uh, you'd have a furnace anyway. Um, you absolutely do need a furnace uh, because these ovens are cool, um, but they can't smelt ores. They can only cook um, wood, saplings, and foods. So you still need one of these, but like I said, don't cook any uh, gold. Uh, keep your gold ore for a little bit later. So the way that this works is here you have a slot for a jar, here you have a slot for fuel, here you have a slot for what you burn, and then you have two output slots. The reason for the stack of clay is because jars are really quite important and you do need a lot of them. So throw them in the furnace. And I had a heap of charcoal to start with. But I've used it in all the other ones. And basically you cook this soft clay jar and you get a cooked clay jar. It's pretty straightforward, pretty standard sort of stuff. Except it didn't... Oh, there it is. Bit of a glitch there. Um, and then that will go in the bottom here and it will catch... Uh, well, it has a chance of catching the vapours that come out. So I'll go over here and, and this is the reason why you need a stack of different things. Uh, this particular one here, Breath of the Goddess. So you can see you get about you get around about 20 when you cook a whole stack. 
Uh, you also have a 100% chance of getting wood ash, um, but you can see here I cooked birch saplings to get those. Now you need those Breath of the Goddess, and you also need Exhale of the Horned ones. Now these particular ones here, you get from oak saplings. And you can see I've got a bunch of clay jars left. Now those have you know around about 20 chance, and you can see here I've got 21. Uh, this foul fume uh, comes from cooking any kind of uh, wood logs. Those are not necessary right away, but they do become necessary as you get a little bit further into the mod. So, Breath of the Goddess, Exhale of the Horn one. Um, you really only need two of each to get started. Um, I'll, I'll go on and I'll show you a little bit of those, what those are later on. So, you've got your, your bit of a farm that you've grown. Um, and then you've got yourself a whole lot of wheat. And for these next ones, I'm going to turn off creative, just so you can see. So that is a fully grown belladonna flower, as Whalia is telling you. That is a fully grown wolfsbane. Those are now fully grown mandrakes. And once it gets the extra sort of like a white double cross, uh, you know that your snowbells are done. And so basically, when you pop snowbells, you get seeds back, as you do with pretty much everything in Minecraft. You also get snowballs, but you have a chance of getting what I just got. No, I didn't get it. Darn it. Um, I'll just go for one more quick run through. And see if I'm lucky enough to get any. If I'm not, I'll just show you what you get. Yep, we didn't get any. Okay, so it's a really low drop chance of getting a thing called an icy needle. Uh, you don't need very many of them, there's only a couple of recipes that use them. Um, and early game, uh, you don't really need very much Wolfsbane either. Um, so you probably don't need to worry too much about, about Wolfsbane. Um, water artichokes are needed for a couple of the recipes. So those are definitely things that you will need to get a couple of. Um, but again, nothing sort of really early game needs to use them. Um, when we get to talking about a bit about poppets later, um, you know, that's when they'll kind of become useful. Uh, these belladonna flowers, um, I find that you mainly use them when you're crafting uh, the books that come with the game, with the mod, sorry. Um, you don't need them a whole lot after that. It adds, and this is why wheat is good, it adds a thing called a hay bale. There's also an item called a wicker bundle that you can make with saplings. Um, that was my mistake. It, it doesn't add the hay bale, it adds the wicker bundle. Um, these have quite a lot of uses. Um, what it does add is it adds a use for the hay bale. Um, and so I'll get to showing you what that is in a later video when we get to some of the, the more advanced things. Um, but in terms of the other items that I have in here, uh, the reason I've got all of these things uh, is because I'm going to show you the first two books that are pretty much essential for getting yourself going. So, the first book that you're going to want is to place a piece of dirt above the top, and that's going to give you a book called Witch's Brews. Uh, the next one, you're going to want to put a dandelion at the top and a poppy, poppy at the top, dandelion at the bottom. Uh, that's Witchcraft Herbology. Now the herbology book tells you all about the different plants, tells you how to get them. So it says the only way to get this one is to mutate it with mutandus. Same with that one. Mandrake, harvest it at night, lest it waken and scream. Now I'll show you what that's about. If I wake this up now, you can see that it wakes up and starts screaming and running around, and you get nausea too from it. Now that's a pain in the backside. Where'd he go? And you have to actually kill him to get him to drop the root. Now mandrake roots are very important and you do need quite a few of them. Um, but if we now go... Set time to midnight. Boop. Now we can just pop them and they come straight out. So that is definitely the way to go about doing it. 
um, hit them at night. Yeah, hit them at night so that they, they you know they basically don't bother you at all. Um, that's really the way to go. Now there's a number of other books that this mod adds. So Witch's Bruise is the first one we made. Um, the next one was Herbology. Um, Herbology is an optional book. You don't really need it. Um, if you're planning on you know referring to the wiki and things like that, uh, it's not really required. Um, the ones that it's useful for are things like graspers. A curious plant that holds whatever is given, mutate it from tall grass and an empty chest. Um, there's a very specific layout you need to do to get that, um, but it's a good reminder to help you remember what it is um, basically that you need. So the next book um, that I consider an absolute must-have uh, is Circle Magic, and the final one is Bruise and Infusions. Um, now, Conjuration and Fetishes, if you go down that particular path of witchery, um, that's a pretty good one. Um, Book of Biomes and Book of Biomes Extended Edition, um, those can be useful if you're going to do the Change Biome Ritual, um, but that's fairly advanced stuff, uh, and Symbology as well. Once you become infused uh, and have that kind of power within you, um, it could be quite useful. Uh, distilling and Collecting Fumes are two that, uh, because of the NEI integration that comes with Witchery, um, basically, if I go to a brew, so say I go to uh, brew, uh, let's go for the brew of bats. If I right click, if I press recipe, it tells me all the recipes I need. But it doesn't tell me how much altar power is required to be able to do it. That's why the book itself um, is a must have. And we'll talk a lot more about this, you can see here. Uh, we'll, and we'll talk a lot more about that once we start to talk about making brews and infusions. Um, but something like distilling. Distilling just tells you what to do to get different items, um, and the NEI setup does that completely. Same with collecting fumes. Um, like before, when I clicked on the recipe for this, it just tells you what it is, so you don't have to worry about um, making those two books. So we've got our witch's ovens. We've made our first couple of fumes. Uh, what's the next thing that you're going to make? And this is the first, I guess, really sort of um, witchy item, not the bucket. Uh, but the cauldron. You go, but I've had heaps of cauldrons before. Well, now what you do is you place a cauldron and you have to make a special paste called an anointing paste. And you use one you use one each of the main seeds that come with witchery, so the belladonna seed, the mandrake seed, the water artichoke seed, and the snowbell seed, and it gives you an anointing paste. And using this anointing paste, you turn it into a special witch's cauldron. Now this takes three buckets of water, so have a source block nice and close. And now the first thing that you want to do is open your book up, and you want to learn how to create mutandus. So if you come in here, uh, the introduction tells you to fill a cauldron, and tells you how to make it, so anointing paste. Um, it then tells you how to basically... Uh, brew things within it and the modifiers and effects system. Um, but what we want to do is we want to um, actually cauldron rituals is a really useful one. Um, but for now we're going to go straight to crafting because crafting is is kind of what you need to do to get started. That's kind of where we're aiming this at. Um, so ritual circles is something that you can do that you have chalk that helps reduce the amount of power this takes. Um, but we're going to go straight to crafting. The first thing you're going to want to craft is mutandus. So you need one mandrake root one exhale of the horn one and an egg. So you can see each of them has zero power cost. Um, if you just were to look up Mutandus from here, um, it wouldn't tell you what the power costs are, so you wouldn't know whether you could do it. Like I said, because it's the very first thing you need to do, quite obviously you do have the ability to do it. So we need mandrakes, we need eggs, and we need exhale of the horned one. So now that the way that this crafting system works is you crack a, a fire underneath it and this is where netherrack would come in really handy once you get that far but again this is still early game it starts to boil once it starts to boil you throw the mandrake root you'll see that it's accepted it try and actually throw an egg in so you can see that it didn't take the egg because I tried to do it in the wrong order. So now we get the purple swirls.
and six mutandas popped out. So now the way I do it is I put the fire straight out because if you put the fire out and then relight it, Minecraft resets the damage value of the log and that log will basically last for all of your early game crafting. So you can see that um, for some of the recipes, um, Witchery actually enforces the correct order of the items going in. Uh, it doesn't do it for all of them, uh, just for some, but that's basically what it is. So now that we've done that, assume you're going to make a whole lot of it, because uh, you will need quite a lot. Um, sort of on the order of 18 to 20 is probably what I would go for. And basically, what it allows you to do uh, is you take a piece of it, you right-click on on a sap on a sapling or a piece of grass, and it has a chance of mutating into something else. Um, so that there's an occasional bug with it, um, where once something's been mutated once, it won't let you mutate it a second time. But you can see doing this, I'm getting all the different kinds of saplings. It is very random as to what it actually turns things into. So Hawthorne sapling, that is the first of the special saplings that you're actually going to need uh, to make trees out of um, that are specific to witchery. The next one, what luck, is the rowan. And then finally, Ah, poo, that wasn't mutandus. Finally, the last thing that I'm actually looking to make let's get rid of my acacia sapling. We've got ember moss already. Acacia, poppy, hawthorn, dark oak. Well, we'll get glintweed as well, but that's not the third kind of sapling that I'm looking for. So we have ember moss, Spanish moss, glintweed, hawthorn. Rowan. Come on. Like I said, you will sometimes need a lot of mutandas to find the things that you want. Just not having any luck at the moment. Again, completely random. There we go. An alder sapling. So now those are the three uh, trees that you will need to make. And they're all pretty much essential to progressing. Um, ember moss is a really cool little plant. I'll heal myself back up. Basically, when anything touches it, it sets them on fire. Um, now, it will actually spread by itself as long as it's on grass. Now, the glintweed actually creates light like a torch and it will spread as well so if we you know leave that for a day or so in Minecraft there'll be a second or a third one around it and then you can pick them up and replant them wherever you want wherever it suits you so that's again a pretty cool thing that it has there um, and this one here Spanish moss basically what I will do is find a wall or or build one out of cobble um, it's kind of really much of a muchness how you do it um, but it is kind of like vines and when you place it, it'll spread. And so that's kind of what you want to do. Uh, it'll also spread on trees and things like that. Um, now you need shears to harvest it. So, I only left myself one iron. Um, so clearly I was one iron short. When I said 22 iron, you'll actually need 23 iron. And so using the shears, you can come up now and pick that up and then just whack it in the middle of a wall somewhere and it'll spread all around and then you can harvest it. it has to be harvested with shears uh, and I'll get into a little bit later on what it's actually used for. Uh, ember moss is the same it has to be harvested with shears uh, and it spreads just like glint weeds so once one spreads break it and move it apart and then both of them should keep spreading. So that's that's kind of all the really really early game stuff um, and how you need to get yourself set up sort of really early on. So the final thing I'm going to show you now, which is kind of what sets everything up for uh, basically what is to come, is I'm going to cut these trees down. And like I said, I've just enchanted this axe to make it a bit quicker. 
Now it's only actually rowan wood that you need um, to get to get you know instantly started. Um, but I like to get a little bit of all of them because uh, I think they add. You know, each of them plus the saplings adds different things. Um, so the sooner you start kind of really harvesting all of them, the better off you're going to be. So this is where the glass comes in. We need to make ourselves some glass bottles. Ah, inventory is full. Let's get rid of most of this stuff because most of it's not going to be required. So now that we have ourselves some of this rowan wood, we take our smooth stone that finally has a use for us, make stone bricks. They go on the edges. We put the breath of the goddess and the exhale of the horn one, a water bottle at the top, and rowan wood logs in the middle. And that gives us three of the altar blocks. Now we need six. Now the reason that I suggested um, that you set yourself up in the middle of a you know, a foresty type biome um, is because the altar that you place, which takes six blocks, you can see it has 967 power here. The times one is the recharge rate, this is the current power. You can see these little sparks coming in. It's nature that actually powers these particular things. So if I plant one, um, two rowanwood saplings, and then bone mill them up to their full trees. And now I click on it, you can see that it's up to a thousand and nine. So it it basically uses the power of trees and flowers uh, and mosses and glint weeds. There we go, you can see it spread. It uses the power of all the things around it within a range of uh, 14 blocks from any corner to basically power it. Now this is why some of those recipes you really need the book for them because so I currently have a thousand and thirty four power so if I was trying to make something that requires two thousand power it just wouldn't work now the next thing is the same range that that can look out is the same range that items can draw their power from the altar so this currently is one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen blocks away so it would be too far away to actually get to draw power. Um, so try and plan your building ahead um, so that you have a really nice forested area and then you can put that in it. Of course being wary of the fact that having an open fire source like this will set trees and things on fire um, and you could go away for a little while and come back and have your entire forest burnt down. Um, so you just, just think of I guess how you're going to lay things out. Uh, what I tend to do um, that works really well is um, fire spreading in Minecraft is a really predictable thing. It looks a certain number of blocks up and one block on each side for things that are flammable. Um, so I tend to put the cauldron and the fire source um, underground or up in the air above it. Um, up in the air above it works quite well um, but you know it, it's each to, each to their own. <clears throat> I find that you can cram more plants and things in uh, if you have like a witchery sort of basement underneath but again it's, it's up to you guys how it is that you want to do that um, just the final thing that I wanted to run you through is when you cook up the hawthorn saplings you get the odor of purity when you cook up the alder saplings you get the reek of misfortune and when you cook up the rowan wood saplings you get the whiff of magic and so the whiff of magic is the first thing that we're going to need uh, for the next episode. There's also some upgrades to the oven that you can get. Uh, these require quite significant investments of time and resources. Um, they make things cook more quickly. Um, they also give you a greater chance of getting fumes. So one basic one takes your chance from about 20 to about 30. If you put two of them on, it takes it from about 30 to about 50. Um, and there's also an upgrade to them called a filtered fume funnel that adds a little purple device. Um, and that takes you up to about 60. So it's um, 20, 30, 50, 60. So I'll show you how to make those fume. So the basic fume funnel uh, takes two blocks of iron, iron bars, a lot of buckets, glowstone block, and a bucket with lava in it. 
So you basically have to go to the nether before you can get that. Um, and when you go to the nether, there's a number of other things that you're going to need. Um, so those will be probably for the next episode. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed seeing how to get started with witchery and kind of what to do with things. Um, like I said, in the next episode, it's going to be talking about the things that you want to start gathering um, that I guess are second tier. So once you start gathering gold and things like that. So until the next episode, thanks for watching. A stocky out.